Our home, the planet Earth, is covered by a total of 332,500,000 cubic miles of water, covering about 70% of its surface. This water was the birthplace of life with the first single-celled bacterium to the first multi-celled organisms. Today, our oceans house over 50% of the 8.7 million species on Earth. 91% of these species have yet to be discovered and have untapped potential in the areas of food production and medicine. Unfortunately, human activities have caused the destruction of countless animal and plant species. There are currently 2,140 marine species that are either threatened or endangered according to the Endangered Species Act. The most common culprit for this destruction is waste that enters the marine environment through human activities. In 1997, it was estimated that 6.4 million tons of trash entered the marine environment. This number has grown over time as world production of products has increased. This trash is commonly seen on shorelines all over the world, even in areas with low populations. Trash travels with winds and currents to new areas and also piles up in certain locations due to the current systems that run throughout the world's oceans. Circular currents compound trash into what are known as trash islands. The largest of these islands is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The size of the patch is unknown, but scientists have collected as much as 1.9 million bits of trash in only one square mile of the patch. This news is very disheartening due to the fact that as much as 70% of the trash that ends up in the ocean sinks. Trash has become the artificial iceberg of the world's oceans. Most of it hides beneath the waves. This trash has seen the destruction of many species, such as loggerhead sea turtles that mistake plastic bags and other thin plastics as jellyfish. Albatrosses are commonly entangled in six-pack rings, along with digesting colorful and shiny bits of plastic that are mistaken for fish. A total of 267 species have been documented consuming plastics. The effects of plastics aren't limited to just large predators, Plastics wear down over time in a process known as polymer degradation. During polymer degradation, the long polymer chains that make up plastics are broken down by things such as heat, light, chemicals, and salts. When plastic undergoes polymer degradation, it breaks down into tiny bits known as microplastics. These microplastics soak up toxins that are then transferred to animals that consume the plankton-sized bits of plastic, such as barnacles. Researchers have found that a third of the barnacles in the North Pacific have microscopic pieces of plastic in their digestive systems at any given time. These toxins then bioaccumulate, that is build up over time, in large predators that consume the plankton feeders. Wild animals aren't the only things affected by plastics in the environment. As plastic bioaccumulates in species normally used for food, we end up with some accumulation of plastic and its related toxins in our own systems. Some of the most commonly consumed animal species contain large amounts of toxins due to their feeding habits. Tuna is one of the most commonly consumed fish in the world, and its toxicity levels are very high due to its voracious appetite. The high mercury content in tuna, due to mercury being a proponent of plastic production, has caused a variety of adverse effects on humans, such as delayed brain development in children, impairment of vision, speech, hearing, walking, and brain degradation in adults. So after seeing all the adverse effects on wildlife, the environment, and people, what can be done about our plastic obsession? The most commonly stated method for changing our polluting habits is to reduce, reuse, and recycle. The first step would be to reduce our dependence on plastics. Today, plastic is used in everything from cars to diapers. So reducing our dependence on plastic is very important to the health of our oceans. Using plastic alternatives, such as aluminum, glass, and cloth, will reduce the amount of plastic that ends up not just polluting our oceans, but the world in general. Reusing plastics is another way to help stop their destruction. One of the most inventive ways imagined to reuse plastic is Rishisawa's Spiral Island. The 3,500 square foot floating island has multiple beaches, a house, trees, two ponds, a solar powered waterfall, and a river. The island is supported by 100,000 used water bottles found along the coast of Mexico. The water bottles were placed into sacks that supported a wooden frame on which the sand for the island was placed. The easiest step to reducing our dependence on plastic is to recycle. Even though plastic isn't biodegradable, it is reusable. Properly disposing of plastic in bar containers allows it to be used over and over again, preventing it from entering the marine environment. 
advances in technology and production strategies has allowed for some new and interesting plastic alternatives. Liquid wood is a bioplastic made of lignin, a natural byproduct of paper manufacturing. This lignin is mixed with water and placed under high heat and pressure to make biodegradable plastic that is strong, moldable, and non-toxic. Because liquid wood is made of wood, it can be recycled as wood. Another new bioplastic comes from chicken feathers. A water-resistant thermoplastic is made using the 3 billion pounds of chicken feathers collected every year in the United States. The feathers are composed mostly of keratin, a natural protein, that is mixed with methyl acrylate, a liquid found in nail polish, to create a highly durable plastic. This plastic will also be cheap due to the abundance of feathers and is fully biodegradable. Thank you for watching our video, and remember, any little thing that you can do to help the environment will have a huge impact in the long run.